Welcome to Orlando, Florida. I'm here in Florida this week, and if you couldn't tell by the sprawling parking lot behind me, Florida is one of those places where you really need to own a car to get around. And if you've been following the news in the automotive industry, there's a car shortage, there's a chip shortage, rental car prices are at all time high, car prices are at all time high, and for the week that I was going to be here in Florida, car rental prices were somewhere around 800 to 1,000 euros just for a basic rental car. That was a complete waste of money. So I had to do something. So it got me thinking, I should just buy a cheap used car to use while I'm here. And you know, I could do something with it afterwards, but it's better than throwing away money into a rental car. And so that's what I decided to do. This is my 2004 Mercury Grand Marquis. What's more quintessentially American than a full-size V8 rear-wheel drive, body on frame, historic car. And that's what we've got here today. So let's jump into it. So if you know anything about Florida, it's stereotypically known for two things, old people and Disney World. And what do old people like to drive to Disney World? These giant American land yachts. These big full-size sedans were and still are pretty popular. I still see these around. Uh, this trip I'm noticing them especially because I'm driving one. But even when I lived here in Florida, I would see these cars all the time. And if you've seen American TV and movies, you've seen similar vehicles uh, as police cars. Those are the Ford Crown Victorias. And these are all part of the same family of vehicles uh, known as Panther platform vehicles. And and this is the Mercury version, the Mercury Grand Marquis. There was also the Ford Crown Victoria, which was used as police cars, and the Lincoln Town Car. This is the Mercury Grand Marquis, and it kind of slots in between. The Ford Crown Victoria was kind of the entry level, um, mass market, you know, used for police cars. Uh, that was that version. The Lincoln Town Car was the high-end luxury vehicle, and the Mercury Grand Marquis was kind of slotted right in the middle. Now, Mercury as a brand doesn't exist anymore, but back in the you know back in the day, this is what the Mercury brand was known for. Kind of this everyday people, entry-level luxury brand. So these types of vehicles are kind of becoming extinct and and really becoming, in my opinion, an American icon and an American classic. And when I was thinking about what kind of car did I want to get while I was here, <laughs> I kind of thought, what's the stereotypical Florida car to get? And this type of vehicle came to mind. And I'll tell you what, I feel like I fit right in here. So why are these vehicles becoming a classic? Well, this is a body on frame, rear wheel drive, V8 sedan. Many of those things don't exist anymore. Body on frame, that's an older type of construction that is no longer used for passenger cars. It's still used for full-size trucks and SUVs. And that's where there's an actual frame that's separate from the body and the body is bolted onto the frame. And like I said, it's an older school type of design. Now most cars are unibody. And I think this is one of the last body on frame passenger car that was created. And this platform and this Panther platform, this design, um, it goes all the way back to the 70s and it was used for decades by Ford and so this architecture albeit an old architecture they perfected it a long time ago and they built these cars right up until 2011 I believe like I said most of these Panther platform vehicles were used as Ford Crown Victoria's the old police cars and now to me from what I've seen in Europe there's a bit of a cult following with those Crown Victoria's uh, I see many people importing them over there because they're kind of an American icon and I've never appreciated this car before leaving the United States and coming back and looking at this car from a different lens. I'm like, you know, this is a pretty cool car. And in fact, I'm not the only one that thinks so. Scotty Kilmer did a really great video on why this car and this type of car is the best used car to get. It has a reliable engine, um, a reliable transmission, cheap to fix, easy to maintain, cheap to maintain. You know, these cars are bulletproof. They can go hundreds of thousands of miles without major issues. And that was one of the things that appealed to me too, as I was buying this kind of older, cheap, used car, I wanted something that was pretty reliable and pretty bulletproof, and that's what this was. So for all of these factors, I said I had to get one of these. I was able to find this one in Orlando and I was able to get it before coming over. So I essentially bought it sight unseen. Uh, my father-in-law was able to go and check it out and said it you know, looked in great condition and was able to buy it. 
So stay tuned towards the end of this video for what my plans are with this Mercury Grand Marquis. Uh, like I said, I bought it to use while I'm here in Florida, but I have more plans for it. So stay tuned till the end for that. So now let's talk a little bit more about the engine. This car has a big old 4.6 liter V8 from Ford. Again, kind of something that is a bit historic. It's a basic, you know, V8 engine. It was one of Ford's modular V8s. And again, pretty bulletproof reliability. These engines were known for use in this car, um, in trucks, and you know, like I said, they're easy to fix, easy to maintain, simple, you know, no complicated electronics. And, you know, these cars are kind of still on the road because these engines will last forever. The body of the car will rust before the engine is, you know, it kicks the bucket. And that's what's pretty impressive about these vehicles. You'll see uh, this type of vehicle, Mercury Grand Marquis, Ford Crown Victoria, Lincoln Town Car, you'll see these doing well over 300,000 miles easily. Again, with basic maintenance, 300,000 miles or around 500,000 kilometers. Um, people have done way more than that. Some people have you know, taken these over a million miles. And that's what's really impressive about this engine and transmission and this platform is this, this kind of car is, it can last forever. It can kind of become a dinosaur, if you will. What's been surprising to me is despite this big V8, uh, rear wheel drive, big sedan, it actually gets pretty decent fuel economy. Now, for me, I have a bit of a heavy foot, but for the past few days that I've been driving it, I've been averaging around 20.4 miles per gallon, which is just around 11.5 liters per 100 kilometers. And that's with, again, more heavy driving. If you really kind of baby this and drive much more cautiously, uh, people can easily get 28 miles per gallon on the highway with these vehicles. And that's really impressive from a V8 rear wheel drive large sedan as this. Sure, this engine doesn't have, you know, direct injection and advanced uh, electronics that improve its efficiency. I get that, and that's why they don't make this car anymore. But for what it is, I mean, that is impressive fuel economy. The next cool thing about this car is that it's a rear wheel drive sedan. Rear wheel drive in sedans uh, is becoming less common. Even in the luxury vehicles, uh, BMW, Mercedes, they're tending to move towards uh, all wheel drive with a rear wheel drive bias. But this is old school architecture, rear wheel drive, um, no frills about it. Um, and you really feel that while you're driving, which is really interesting to me. I've never really owned a rear wheel drive sedan. Um, and there's a really big difference in driving feel when it comes to rear wheel drive. I'll come back to the driving dynamics of this car. By no means is it something, you know, exciting, but still having that big smooth V8 in the front and rear wheel drive in the back and kind of that combination on this platform. Um, it's really unique actually. And it's a really unique driving experience. So a, giant American car with a big V8 in the front, rear wheel drive, body on frame construction. I had to have it. I had to have one of these. And this particular example that I found online was in great shape. Uh, it has less than 100,000 miles, so less than 160,000 kilometers. It's always been owned in Florida by three previous owners who my assumption were elderly people who just drove these around for you know basic duty and um, you know barely used this vehicle and it was well maintained it's in great shape you know it's not perfect it's a it's still an 18 year old car at the end of the day but for what it is for an 18 year old car it's in great shape and it drives great there's no major mechanical functions or mechanical issues with it and um, that's been pretty impressive to to see coming back to the driving experience of this vehicle in a single word i would describe it as as comfortable it's big floaty floats over bumps in the road it's loose it drives like a boat it's not fun to drive and it's not meant to be I've covered this in previous videos that driving in the US is a chore and people want that chore to be as easy and relaxing and comfortable as possible and this car fit the bill and that was why it was popular with for a lot of years for, with a lot of people looking at the seats this is like sitting on a living room couch um, it can actually seat three across, it's a big bench seat. It's comfortable, it's relaxing. You can drive this for hundreds and thousands of miles uh, without much effort. And I found that over the past few days while driving. I don't even want to speed. I'm cruising in the right lane, just relax, just driving from point A to point B. And that's been really nice with this vehicle. The driving experience can be summarized as quintessentially American land yacht. And there's something cool about that. There's something historic about that because that doesn't really exist anymore. 
And so this car, I believe, is really going to become a classic. It's really going to be something historic. And I had to experience it for myself, and I'm glad I did. Now, going back to my plans for this car. Like I mentioned earlier, I've seen a few of these types of vehicles over in the Netherlands, in mainland Europe. But they're pretty rare, and understandably so. It's a big car, no cameras, no sensors, um, difficult to drive. It's fine for big American streets like you see here. Uh, because we have much bigger cars than this, but over in Europe, it's a bit rare and it got me thinking Maybe I should ship one of these over there and experience what it's like to drive one of these big American land yacht sedans over there And I wanted to get your guys's thoughts. What do you think? Should I ship this car over to the Netherlands and drive it around and make some videos with it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious to get your thoughts. I think it would be really cool Driving this around here is comfortable, it's easy, but over in the Netherlands, I prefer my BMW. I prefer the driving experience there. And I'm really curious what it's like to drive something like this over there. And since I have this anyway, why not ship it over there? So let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm really curious to get your thoughts. And while you're there, let me know what you think about this car. Um, have you seen them on TV? Have you seen them in movies? Um, what do you think they're like? I'm probably gonna do a second part to this video because there's so much more I want to cover about this car. Um, from the size to the trunk capacity to, you know, some of the features or lack of features it has. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. And in the meantime, please consider subscribing and thanks for watching.